Uh, just as uh, Doug Steadman was describing uh, the Budco contribution uh, of the land, the uh, reason you had difficulty hearing him uh, was that there was a Budweiser truck just going down A Street here, which is one of the, the great ironies, I think, of, of the morning, or suggest the gods are smiling upon us, uh, uh, even. Um, I wanted to just fill in one other detail that uh, might be of interest, I don't think it's been documented anywhere, uh, that at that presentation before the Texas Highway Commission that uh, we did that led to the funding, there was a, a phone call made to Jeff Wentworth by Jossie Strauss, who uh, had been uh, uh, the, one of the developers of the uh, uh, Las Casas Foundation, and um, uh, whose son, of course, is now Speaker of, 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 of the Texas House. But uh, we think we owe a debt of gratitude to Jossie Strauss for making that phone call uh, to get Jeff Wentworth to show up, because uh, that actually, that Jeff Wentworth and John Saunders, the city councilman from San Antonio at the time, were there endorsing uh, uh, the uh, application that, that, that we were submitting. Um, I think gave us uh, a leg up over some of the other presenters. And, uh, I don't think that's been, been documented anywhere before. Uh, there's been some uh, issue of why we really want to talk about the railroads related to the bridge. Uh, well, there, there are several reasons we need to do that. Uh, the railroads have influenced this neighborhood. Uh, the, neighborhoods have, uh, the neighborhood here has certainly influenced rail service, as you've already heard, and uh, the Railroads in general have influenced San Antonio growth generally, uh, which means that the San Antonio, uh, this neighborhood in San Antonio has had its own role in influencing uh, our local growth uh, as well. Well, Hay Street Bridge has been uh, a fundamental part of that dynamic all along, but uh, to really appreciate that, it, 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 it's useful to uh, appreciate a little bit about the history of, uh, of uh, railroading in San Antonio. Railroad didn't come to San Antonio until 1877. We were the last major city in North America to receive railroad service. It was an accident of history and geography that, 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 that we can perhaps uh, uh, go into. Uh, could have happened earlier, but for the Civil War. There were discussions nationally uh, in the 1850s, uh, of course, of a transcontinental route, and there was some debate about whether it should go a northern route, as it ultimately did, as you know, from Omaha to uh, California, uh, or whether there should be a southern route. Well, when the Civil War erupted, that put the southern route out of, uh, out of the mix. Uh, had there been a, a southern route, it likely would have uh, influenced railroading in San Antonio, but uh, because of the Civil War, it didn't happen, and it didn't come here until uh, 17 years after the Civil War. Uh, broke up. Uh, in uh, 1877, the Galveston, Harrisburg, and San Antonio Railroad inched its way finally into Bear County and into San Antonio. And the railroad line uh, from the east ended at Hay Street. Ironically enough, right at Hay Street was the end of the railroad line in 1877, long before, uh, long before uh, the bridge. There was a switching yard there with six tracks underneath where the, the, the bridge uh, is now between there and, uh, and the uh, roundhouse uh, as it uh, fanned, fanned out in that area. The original station, which BL has some photographs he'll, he'll show to you, uh, the original station was built opposite where Carranza's grocery is, sort of uh, on the Sherman uh, Street uh, side of that embankment there, just down from the roundhouse. That station uh, served as the focal point for railroading, passenger railroading, uh, in San Antonio for uh, many years until Sunset Depot was built uh, in 1903. Uh, the idea uh, that that uh, of that station going in ended up inspiring a lot of commercial development along Austin Street and really was responsible for a lot of what happened in this neighborhood uh, as far as residential growth as well. Carranza's grocery actually dates from that period uh, of 
the old uh, wooden station. Um, uh, the new station was built further south, of course, after the decision was made to extend the uh, railroad further west from, from Hay Street. Uh, and of course, as you know, as, as you, uh, you have to go south if you're not going to go through the Central Business District, which uh, of course uh, 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 was not possible even in those days. Uh, uh, you had to go south before you went west. As it turns out, that turn uh, where you go from an east-west direction along the Pan Am Expressway there, roughly paralleling that, to a north-south direction. That turn within uh, a matter of a uh, hundred yards or, or, or two uh, is the sharpest turn in the entire Southern Pacific system in this part uh, of the country. And that ended up leading to uh, a, a der derailment. Uh, 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 actually, folklore has it that there, there, there was more than one, but we have photographs that you might have already seen of the uh, derailment that took place in the 1970s. The railroad sought right of way as it was being extended uh, south of Hay Street, finally. And the city granted that right of way in exchange, as Doug Stedman mentioned, for the Hay, for, for a bridge to be built to serve this part of, of the uh, community. So that this, this Bidley Hill uh, and uh, the Government Hill and other neighborhoods wouldn't be isolated uh, from, from uh, downtown. Well, the trade that was made was to award Walnut Street to the railroad. Uh, for all practical purposes. Uh, as you know, streets on the near east side of town are named after trees. There's live oak and, and chestnut. Uh, there was walnut, cherry, mesquite, hackberry, olivus, uh, and on up. Well, Walnut Street doesn't exist anymore, but those of us who grew up in the neighborhood can remember street signs. <laughs> in fact, there were no houses, or maybe one or two houses uh, where hobos lived or something. Uh, uh, along the railroad tracks there. Uh, but Walnut Street, and there might still be signs, I, I, I don't know, <laughs> suggesting that, is the railroad uh, track. And uh, uh, when you wanted to offend somebody to call them a hobo or something, you would say that they, 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 they lived on Walnut Street in, in, in San Antonio. That was one of the, <laughs> the things that we, we remember from, uh, from, from growing up. Um, uh, in any case, this development of the railroad locally inspired San Antonio's growth enormously and San Antonio became the largest city in Texas uh, influenced by several factors in the early 20th century the Galveston uh, the Galveston hurricane and flood of course uh, put Galveston out of contention Galveston had been the largest city for, for a, a time San Antonio was the largest city un, until the 19. Uh, 30s uh, or so. San Antonio grew, population here grew five times over, uh, uh, multiplied five times uh, from 1900, the turn of the century, into uh, the 1930s. Population grew from uh, uh, 50,000 or so, just under 50,000, um, uh, actually uh, just about 40,000, uh, to a quarter of a million uh, by, the, uh, by the 1930s. Uh, uh, but by then uh, we were and had been eclipsed by Houston and Dallas. But the railroads are what made possible that enormous growth. That, that enormous growth would not have been possible uh, without the railroads and without Hay Street Bridge playing the role that it did. Um, uh, there was a reference made in a question about the role of the explosion at the S.P. Champs, which took place in 1912. Mind you, 1912, that was the same year that the Hay Street Bridge opened. Uh, so the, the bridge witnessed, and preparations of the bridge witnessed some major events in local history. That uh, this was the largest industrial accident up until that time in Texas, and it's only been eclipsed by the uh, the Great Texas City Explosion, the ammonium nitrate corn products explosion uh, in, in 1947, but it is it remains the largest explosion of uh, a uh, railroad uh, boiler uh, all, all 
altogether uh, in, in the country. Uh, the reason it happened uh, was that, uh, as you know, uh, the process of creating the, the steam in, involves uh, building up a lot of, uh, uh, or powering the engine, the, what, what really amounts to the external combustion engine, which is what a steam engine is as opposed to the internal, uh, involves putting up, building up a lot of pressure. Uh, uh, that pressure has to go somewhere, and usually a relief valve will end up uh, uh, releasing that pressure. In uh, this case, uh, the two relief valves were shut off so that the pressure uh, became so enormous that the steam engine became a bomb for all practical purposes, and it blew up in early March of 1912, blasting shrapnel for 10 blocks or more, 10 block radius around the roundhouse, which meant that, that shrapnel and debris would have hit us uh, uh, if we happened to be playing in Lockwood Park. And as uh, John Tite had described, it was a force uh, powerful enough to knock his uh, uh, father as a child uh, uh, to the ground uh, uh, more than, than uh, 10 blocks away. But explosion was heard for 20 miles around. And you could practically hear the explosion. Uh, and so again, it killed 26 people, injured uh, dozens more, uh, more than, than 40 people uh, were injured, and it, uh, it leveled adjacent uh, houses and buildings, and uh, even injured people uh, who were affected by debris falling through their roofs and collapsing uh, their houses uh, around them. That's how serious it was. Circumstances that led to it are, are really compelling to explore, and, and I think uh, uh, bear more investigation. Uh, there was a strike going on at the time, and there were strike breakers who were manning uh, the, 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 uh, the engine uh, uh, there. They didn't necessarily know what they're doing, they, they, they were doing. Uh, and that is the official, uh, the, 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 the official uh, line, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, uh, weigh in one way or another on that, uh, because the record uh, is, is highly ambiguous. One of the things that isn't, though, is, uh, that, that is also r rather curious, is that there were uh, a significant number of minority employees there who perhaps had been hired as strike breakers. Uh, when you look at the newspaper accounts at the time, uh, they, they identify, it's interesting, they identify the, the positions of those who've been injured, but if they happen to be black or Mexican American, they're just they're just described as Negro or Mexican uh, in in the newspaper, uh, and and uh, and the description of those who who were killed. Uh, uh, not a majority of, of them were were minority group members, but uh, a significant significantly larger number than you you, you would have uh, expected. Uh, uh, at, at, at such an industrial site at that time uh, in history. Uh, uh, and of course, the labor unrest might have had something to do with that. But it's a fascinating uh, part of our overall history. And um, uh, BL has some photos that uh, can uh, enlighten you a little bit more about that. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is the, uh, the, the derailment. Oh, by the way, the, uh, the, the description of the, the newspaper uh, account of the uh, injured and dead gave addresses of where if people lived, they were all from this neighborhood. Uh, you know, most of them, you know, were Mesquite Street, Pine, Olive, and, uh, and so on. They were neighbors <laughs> uh, here, and people lived near work, of course, uh, uh, in those days. Made, uh, made a, a, a lot of sense. But that, uh, that is an, uh, an area of some considerable controversy. Uh, the uh, derailment that you have photographs of uh, is the other big, one of the, the, the other big uh, events in the uh, neighborhood uh, uh, affecting the railroads uh, generally. As we suggested, there's practically a 90 degree turn in less than, than, than a couple hundred yards there. Uh, this derailment placed the, and, and it, uh, 
the, the accounts that I've read, the descriptions I've, I've, I've heard, uh, suggest that uh, it was an Amtrak. Uh, the early days of Amtrak uh, were in the early 70s, since that National uh, Passenger Railroad Corporation was formed, I, I think in 71. 71 was when it was formed, right? right, right. Uh, so that, that uh, uh, even though that engine has Union Pacific markings on it, and, and, and this, is, this is the image of it that some of you, I think, some of you have seen. Uh, uh, that train was going, was obviously speeding, and there was a speed-related issue, but it was, there was also a weather-related issue. This is the winter, there's snow on the ground, as you, you might have noticed in those, those photographs. Speed limit is, it, it was 15 miles an hour, which is really slow for, for, for a train. They move the switching yards so much time faster than that. But that's the, that was the speed limit then. I don't think it's much higher than that now. That train that ended up in Austin Street obviously uh, uh, was out of control, and they might have applied the brakes too late and ended up uh, sliding literally off the rails. The, if you look at Austin Street, uh, right near Duval, where the, that takes place, you'll see an embankment uh, with the tracks right at the very edge uh, of it. That, that when you're on the train, part of the train is <laughs> practically over Austin Street uh, there, which is, uh, is really sort of amazing. It's comparable to, to riding uh, Amtrak uh, uh, along a river valley or something uh, that, 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 that you, you really can't see uh, 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 what's supporting you, and, and, and uh, all you see is Austin Street as you're, uh, as you're making that turn. They, in fact, call that steep embankment the levee, uh, and, and it has been known as that in local, local uh, uh, railroad lore for a, a, long, uh, a long time. Uh, fortunately, that 73 derailment didn't result in any loss of life, uh, uh, just a lot of embarrassment and, and, and a few people needing new jobs <laughs> as a result. Uh, and uh, uh, according to folklore, there have been there have been other uh, such uh, uh, near misses or uh, derailments that uh, were not highly publicized in that location as well. Um, back to the Hay Street Bridge. Uh, just as we conclude this, I I want to mention that the bridge itself was owned by the railroads uh, until uh, 2007, uh, from, from the time they were constructed, uh, before they were moved here, as uh, Doug Stedman uh, 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 suggested, uh, in 1881 until 2007, they were in the hands of uh, the railroad, which reluctantly gave them up. Anybody who's dealt with the railroad knows that they're uh, the railroads are very slow to move and are very difficult to uh, uh, negotiate with or to get an agreement from. And the railroad um, uh, uh, didn't necessarily want to surrender that bridge uh, to, uh, to the public. Uh, uh, they did, and it's our legacy. They have bequeathed that bridge uh, to the community here, and uh, it's up to the... Uh, citizens of San Antonio who have been entrusted uh, with its uh, future and uh, all of uh, our leaders to uh, protect that bequest and that, that legacy and we hope to be up to the task. One final point to uh, mention related to railroad history in San Antonio that I think is also important, I'm a big Amtrak uh, advocate as some of you know, uh, is the numbering of the trains that come through San Antonio. The Amtrak numbers its trains according to their, their uh, sequence and historical significance within the system. Well, the Sunset Limited trains that come through San Antonio are Amtrak trains number one and two. <laughs> so that, that, that we have a, a, a significant railroad legacy to uh, protect here in San Antonio. B.L. Meyer, who is the former chairman of the San Antonio Rail Heritage uh, Museum, which uh, operates and uh, maintains uh, Engine 794 down at uh, Sunset Station, is uh, a, a local rail historian who uh, is going to offer us some, some other insights and can maybe answer questions that you might have about uh, local railroad railroad history. I, I, I must also say, and I'm embarrassed to say this with BL standing here, that <laughs> the photographs that I circulated uh, of the derailment 
came from the Texas Transportation Museum uh, website. VL maintains a, a very fine website as well for his museum, uh, competing museum, uh, contributed uh, the photographs that, you, that you've seen. Sorry about that. Hey, you know, it happens. It, it happens. <laughs> I, and talking about Amtrak, I want to just make one point, uh, quick point, before uh, Nettie is introduced by Marisol. Uh, and that's that San Antonio is the only city in Texas that has two long-distance trains um, uh, operating uh, through it. Uh, but Dallas and Houston each uh, have one. Fort Worth has that, that short train that goes up to Oklahoma City, the Heartland Flyer. But San Antonio has the east-west train number one, number two, uh, the Sunset Limited, of course, which is, as we've noted, one of the more historic trains in the system. And uh, also train number 21 and 22, which is the Texas Eagle, which leaves every morning from, from Sunset Station, a few blocks away there, to Chicago. Uh, and you get to Austin on it, if you leave 7 in the morning, you get to Austin at 9. It's a great commuter coming back from Austin. You get back here at 9 o'clock, uh, it leaves Austin uh, at 6.30 in the evening, gets back here at, at, at 9 p.m. So it, it, there is already commuter rail in, <laughs> between San Antonio and Austin. There's only one train a day each way, <laughs> uh, but that's all you need if uh, uh, you plan uh, very carefully. So <laughs> consider consider that. Thank you. Sure, sure. This will have the dinner train, the one that takes you a couple of hours for dinner. No, that, that, that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, the, the, the tracks that, the, the, there was a train, uh, just a, a, a trolley car that went into, uh, that's operated by the, the Museum Association, uh, I think it was, or the Transportation Museum before it actually uh, moved out to uh, Wetmore, uh, uh, that uh, on those tracks along Jones Avenue, uh, those tracks, in fact, went to the station. Uh, the, the original location of the station that we've been talking about, just, just in the neighborhood here. So, uh, uh, those, the trolley cars uh, that were in place uh, in San Antonio were focused on moving people from the train station uh, uh, around the city or through the rest of the city. So uh, you can still see remnants of, uh, of uh, those, those uh, trolley car tracks. Uh, but the, the, the dinner train, which was using some of those, those tracks for a time, uh, doesn't uh, exist anymore. <laughs>